Hi there, welcome to Three Rivers again. My name is Steve, good to see you all. Welcome to our online service. Uh, we're starting to ease towards the end of a bit of a lockdown in the UK, so that's good news. And uh, soon we're gonna be able to meet together in a limited capacity. So from the 12th, uh, we're gonna be able to start meeting together, some of us at least. Some will continue and would prefer to, to stay at home and we'll still continue online services. Uh, for everyone but also we're going to be able to gather again soon and there's a letter gone out with our news sheet this week just explaining all that so please remember to read that as we get uh, to this different stage um, but this morning is a, a global Sunday we do a few of these in a year and today Phil Bushel is going to be coming later to uh, to speak to us Phil spends a lot of the year in Bangladesh most years uh, in Bangladesh but not so much this year and it's good to have him with us this morning. And then we're going to also have just some time later on with prayer uh, around our global partners as well later on. Um, tonight, Presence is back, half past six on Zoom. That's going to happen. So join us if you can for that tonight. All the details of all these things are in the new sheet, all the Zoom codes and everything. So we'll have a look at that to get all the details. Next Sunday is going to be first Sunday again. Yep, it's the first Sunday of the month again already. And so if you've got testimonies about what God is doing in your life at this time, then get them sent in to Mark this week before Wednesday so that we can include them in our service next Sunday. Uh, again, just want to give a notice about the Hope Space, which is going to be opening soon in the centre of Bedford Town, trying to bring the presence of God into Bedford Town Centre and establish his presence there. 
And so uh, all the details of that, again, are in the new sheet, but they still need volunteers, people who can be there to help man it. There's some items that are needed, things that they need that they can use. Uh, and there's also going to be a prayer meeting on Wednesday afternoon for that as well. So all the details of all these things are in the new sheet. So please remember just to have a read at that um, before then. Two other things just uh, to say. We're sad to see the Pickerings are heading back up north. So we're, we're really sad to see them go. There's an email gone out with a little letter uh, from them. So make sure you read that as they head off. And also just to say Jill Daniels, who was a... Uh, part of the Rutland, Rutland Road Church uh, has, has passed away. Um, so if you hadn't heard that already, just please remember her and her family in your prayers um, at this time. Okay, so as we hand back to worship, let's stand together and uh, we're gonna, I'm going to read some scripture and let's just the presence of God flood over. So let's just take a moment right now, just allow God to come. Father, just come in your presence and just flood over us right now, wherever we're standing right now, wherever we're sitting. Just come in your presence and touch us just now, Lord. I want to read from Psalm 113. It says, The Lord is exalted over all the nations, his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He sits them with princes, with the princes of his people. The Lord is exalted over all the nations. He is high and above every nation, every person on this earth, everything on this earth. He's high above them. It even says that God looks down on the earth and he looks down on the heavens as well. Yeah, He's bigger than the heavens and the earth. And he raises the poor from the dust. And sits them with princes. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are in this world. God sits you with princes. Yeah, that's what he thinks of you. You're royalty to him. He loves you. You're part of his family. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are, how poor you are, how bad off you think you are. God sits you with princes. He establishes you as one of his children here on this earth. You're his royalty, his royal family, his royal priesthood. You're part of him. So, Father, we come this morning, we want to worship you, Lord. We want to say that you are our God. We ask you to come in your spirit, presence yourself on us, Lord. Help us to know that we are your priests, Lord, on this earth, that we are um, your royalty on this earth, Lord, that you set us with princes, Lord, that you love us. And just, Lord, we want to feel your lavish love flow through, flow through us right now, Lord. Father, we love you and we want to lift you up, Lord. We want to say that you're exalted one. You are the exalted one, Lord. Only you are worthy, exalted over all the earth. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Blessed be your name.
Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. No matter what we're going through. Blessed be your name. You are good, you are good. You are good. You are faithful. You're the lover to the lonely.
Halleluja 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 Yes Halleluja Lift it up Halleluja 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 we will forever hallelujah 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 Good morning, Three Rivers Church. I'm just going to bring some um, words that after prayer we feel that God wants to touch people this morning with specific conditions, with um, particular illnesses, as well as, um, so, uh, as restoring their spiritual lives. And so I'm just going to share um, those words now. Somebody with a searing pain just above their right knee, suffering from hay fever, an increase in asthma attacks. Someone with a red soreness to the skin that's about the size of a hand that indicates some condition underneath the surface. The Lord says that if you place your hand upon that patch then he will bring his healing to whatever is wrong beneath the surface. Then there's a picture, a picture of a black plastic bin liner which contains your possessions as a child being removed from one foster care home to another. This has left you with the feeling of being rubbish ever since. God wants to heal you of that memory and replace it with a true image of how he feels about you. There's someone with a bad headache that's making them feel nauseous. There's hope for the future, yes, but it's wrong to place your hope in that rather than in the God of now. Our Heavenly Father wants you to trust him now and what he can do to bring peace and security to the present circumstances. And then someone who's feeling weary and disheartened and feeling a bit worthless. There's a verse in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever wasted. And the Lord is saying to be courage, encouraged and take heart. He takes pleasure in you and everything you seek to do for him is watching over you. He is the God who sees you and you are of great worth. So I want to pray for those um, people who have resonated with some of these words. And maybe if that's you, you could um, just reach out as a sign that you want to receive from God this morning. Reach out your hand or stand or, or something. Uh, and God, by the power of his spirit, wants to touch your life right now. So let's pray together. Let's join together. And um, the rest of you could maybe reach out your hands towards your screens or, um, and just join with this prayer. Father God, I thank you that you speak directly to us today in words, in pictures, through your precious word, the Bible. And I thank you for these words this morning that have highlighted things in people's lives. And some of them really 
really difficult and heavy things. But God, nothing is too difficult for you because you want to break into those situations. We want to release your power into those situations and those feelings right now. Lord, I pray for physical healing. I pray for a restoration of um, the image of how you see people, that who they are in you is of such value. And Lord, we pray that um, you would touch people in, in different ways and bring healing and restoration and new life and freedom. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, I'll be praying on behalf of us all as we think of our global partners and concerns around the world. So, we could be here for all day long, but Phil and Jenny normally work in Bangladesh, but they have been back here in Bedford since late January, and he will be bringing us today's message. We're going to just pray for them. Lord, thank you for all they have been able to continue doing in Bangladesh from a distance while here in the UK. We do pray that you will give them wisdom with regard to the right time to return to Bangladesh. Whether Phil should go in advance of Jenny and for how, by how long. Lord, we do pray for your protection from the virus on all the Christian workers, both nationals and foreign, as the lockdown lifts in that country and there is more movement of people. Finally, Lord, we ask that within the country there will be a genuine desire to seek after you, knowing that those who seek will find. Amen. We're now going to be praying for a young couple who were sent out in January this year to a country God had laid on their hearts. So let's pray for them. Lord, thank you that they have seen you open up the way for entry, for visas, for accommodation, and now for language courses. We give thanks that they have been able to start living their dream. But we do ask, Lord, that you will continue to guide their steps. They won't run ahead of you, but be patient as they wait, learn, and discover all that you have planned for their future in that country. Amen. Now we're going to be praying for a couple from this fellowship who have returned to their home country of the Czech Republic. Slavic had a stroke in January this year and still remains in hospital. Yara is now able to revisit him because the restrictions have been lifted so she can go and see her husband again. Let's pray. Father, we do pray that the power of your word, both written and spoken, will release Slavic back to health and healing. Lord, we ask that the chains that currently restrict him today will be broken and that he will live fully again to declare your goodness. Lord, please give Yara the strength she needs each day to care for the house, the garden, to keep in touch with family and friends, as well as visiting Slavic. Amen. And finally, we're going to be praying for countries around the world. 
I'm asking you just to say aloud those countries or individuals that you have connections with and concerns for. Then I'll draw them all together in our prayer time. Heavenly Father, these countries and individuals are all known to you. Thank you for bringing them into being and that your care and love for them exceeds our own. Lord, we pray for all those needing to make important decisions in these COVID crisis time. Give them wisdom, integrity, and justice. And Lord, we pray that believers in those lands will remain strong in their faith and reach out in compassion and in love to others. Lord, may people in these countries have a desire to get to know you and be led by the Spirit in their search. Finally, Lord, we ask for your mercy that you will step in and eradicate this virus. Lord, it's a big ask, but then you are, you reign supreme over all the world and you can do it and only you. Thank you, Lord. We know that you have heard our prayers and we bless you that answers will come. Amen. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you this morning. I know that you've seen a picture of us just a few minutes ago as V was praying for various global matters. And we so much appreciate your prayers. Uh, and of course, you would know that links us with a country called Bangladesh, which has become ingrained or just a part and part of our lives now for the past 45 years. We came back from Bangladesh three months back now. Um, and it's a strange time, isn't it? It's, it's strange. Actually, this, this morning, I do actually have a few people present, and it's about the nearest to get to people in the church since coming back from Bangladesh. But we've lived in between, and in these Zooming days, we, we Zoom from the UK to Bangladesh and back again, sometimes within the space of an hour or two. In fact, when I go home from here, we have a Zoom prayer meeting with uh, folks in Bangladesh. So it's a strange thing living in the two worlds and yet really not quite at this stage being arriving in, in or living in one of them. So Zoom has sort of united us across the world and it's been interesting because uh, even in Bangladesh where there's been uh, groups meeting, it has brought in people who are further away. So people who have been more isolated can, if they've got the smartphone technology, uh, participate uh, in a fellowship. And of course, for us in the UK, we can still participate. And I've spoken, preached in Bangladesh several times since arriving back in the UK. In fact, there is a, there's a, a, a transnational Bengali fellowship uh, run by a guy in London, and I was asked to share in one of their meetings, and there was guys from South Korea to the Philippines, to Bangladesh, of course, to the UK, to Canada, and to America. So I became an international speaker. How about that? My, my uh, you know, claim to fame is I'm on television today. That's a new thing for me as well. But in that sense, I suppose some of the good things that has come out of our existing situation is we've entered what we call a, a flat world, not a flat earth, not a flat earther, but we have become in some senses a flat world people. And we are connected, we're disconnected, but in other ways we are connected uh, in more ways uh, than we have been before. 
Now, I was asked to share here this morning quite a number of weeks back, and I don't know how other people do when they're uh, being asked to speak. It sort of churns away in the back of your mind as you think, what am I going to say? And such like coming up nearer the time before you actually sort of start to concentrate on it. But then maybe about three weeks ago, I was contacted by folks in Bangladesh, a little small church that we're a part of in our area of Dhaka. It's only a group of about, if it's a, a big group, we might have 20 there, and often there's only even five or six there. Uh, but it's one that we're attending every Friday morning, because the Friday is the Sunday there. Friday is the national uh, day off. And I was asked to speak uh, two days after this event. Well, normally, well, first of all, when you, when you leave Bangladesh, you generally leave Bangladesh. And when you're in the UK, you don't think Bangladesh. But now in this era, we are uniting the two again. And so normally I would push it back a week and think, well, I don't want to do the two so near to each other. And I generally, as a general rule, try to tailor what I'm saying to the particular audience that I'm speaking to, rather than just having a message that you can say in two or three places. But I suddenly began to think that it's a time when we have these international interconnectedness. How does one speak to two different audiences in two different countries with a very similar, it's not going to be identical, a very similar message. When you speak to a UK audience, you know, normally you sort of know what you're going to come into. You know who's going to be there, and you want to be usually well prepared. It may change beforehand, but usually you go in with a pretty clear idea of what you're going to go to. But in Bangladesh, when you sit down with an audience, well, you don't know before you actually arrive there what the audience is going to be. You're going to be expecting one group, and you've got a different group. You could be expecting all men, and for some reason you've got all women. I, I, I spoke at a Christmas one, and I was expecting a lot of kids. But I didn't know they'd actually done a separate program for the kids, and all the kids trooped out. And I was left with the adults with a, basically a kid's message. Uh, and so you don't prepare in such detail. You know what's on your heart, but you have to cast it into the form of the people that you actually find uh, when you turn up there. But I thought this time I'm going to try to unite the two. You know, and because technology has made this possible. So we have this sort of interconnectedness, although it, it's partly true, because if you've got your smartphone, and a lot of people in Bangladesh these days, especially in the big cities, have got smartphones, although the data connection is often quite weak. So I've done some English teaching by data connection, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it's, it's a bit awkward. Um, so there are things in which we are equal. There remains things which are very, very different. And uh, do you know this year you can do Keswick online? You can do uh, New Wine online? Uh, you can visit any church you want to in the UK online these days. You can church hop around the place. And we have enormous resources available to us in English. But that's where the flat world doesn't quite extend, because once you get into Bengali, very, very limited to what you can tune into. And alongside that, the security issues. We're going out today on Facebook. And so, you know, it's open for anyone to, to, to listen to. And generally speaking, here in the UK, that's not a problem. That's not true in many other parts of the world. And you've got to be thoughtful and wise in what you say. So although there is a sense of being the same, there's also a sense in which we have to remember we're very different. And particularly when you turn off your camera and you go back to the world and you suddenly find, well, I'm not quite the same as those guys out there. Um, we don't have a, a, a 4,000 bed Nightingale Hospital in, in, in London available to us in Bangladesh. In fact, there's, I think there's 180 ICU beds in the whole country, a number of which are reserved for the police and uh, for the medical profession. They all reserve their quota if they can. And so very, very limited resources. And the, the virus count now is going through the roof. We've had two months of lockdown there that's come to an end, more or less, uh, and it's uh, uh, resulted in a very effective distribution uh, of the virus because of the particular way that it was done. Um, and so things are now more difficult they were than when we left there three months ago. 
But anyway, what I was drawn to was this passage of Scripture because of this interconnectedness idea in Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to read that, but I'm going to pray first. And uh, pray, Lord, that you would help us to realize that we are uh, in ourselves united, but we're not only united with ourselves, we're united with your church, your body around the world. And we thank you for that, but open our eyes to it as well as we sit here and in our uh, living rooms or whatever to know that we do reach out and we do touch hundreds, thousands, millions of others around the world, one in Christ. So open our eyes to that, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to read this from Galatians chapter 3. And I'm starting uh, verse 22, a little bit before what I want to emphasize, but just to get the context. So Galatians 3, and we're, we're into verse 22. But the scripture declares that the whole world is a prisoner to sin. So that what was promised, being given through faith in Jesus Christ, might be given to those who believe, those who have faith, those who have faith receive the promise that is given. Before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. The law with its rules uh, and directions of what you could do, should do, shouldn't do, mustn't do limited our freedom, but it limited or controlled our sinfulness and proved our sinfulness because it showed what we were doing wrong. So it goes on. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ. We needed help. We needed a way out that we might be justified by faith. Now that faith has come, we are no longer under the supervision of the law. You are all sons and daughters of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For all who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So the verse to take away with you, to remember, to uh, have seep into you is verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek nor other nationalities, slave nor free, ethnic groups, male nor female. You are all one in Christ. Hallelujah. You're all one in Christ. Now that verse came to mind before the George, George Floyd events and the, the, the international movement that has come out of it. But it's as appropriate to that as to the link to Bangladesh or to other parts of the world. All one in Christ. Now the last verse that we read, I'm going to start at the last verse and work backwards. It says, if you belong to Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Abraham's seed. Now, where did Abraham pop up from? You know, that's a long, long time ago, Abraham. How many thousands, uh, 5,000 years or more? Abraham, we find right there in the beginning of the Bible. Do remember that Galatians is written to very new believers, just a few years old. They didn't know anything beforehand. Most of them were not from Jewish background. And as new believers, this is Paul, the Apostle Paul, wading in with some deep lessons right from the beginning of the Old Testament. Abraham comes there in in the end of chapter 11 of Genesis, and then right through Genesis we get Abraham and his uh, early family and the story of him. And Abraham is one of the great figures of the Bible. The strange thing is, Abraham didn't do much. You know, there's no great records of the miracles and the, and the you know, Moses, ten plagues, and out of Egypt and across the wilderness and into the promised land nearly. Abraham, very, very little. And yet he's there as the great father of the Israelite nation and of the father 
of those who believe. He trusted in God. What he did was he left his own country. He left where he was born and brought up and went off to another place because God told him to. And he lived all his life in tents and he waited for his son to be born. He waited 25 years. He was 100 years old and his wife was 90 when at last Isaac was born. And so he was a man of faith. It's, it's interesting, isn't it? That simple act of faith change, you're just trying to think of the, of the change that is wrought through Abraham. And that simple act of faith has meant Abraham is considered the father of the Jews, the father in that sense even of Muslims who honour him as uh, you know, one of the earliest, or they, they often cite him as the first Muslim. Uh, he's uh, the father of faith to Christians. Uh, and so almost half the world's population know about Abraham. And Abraham, it says, because he believed, God accepted him. Before law came, before Moses came, before there were rules of righteousness, Abraham believed God. But then it says there were promises that were given to Abraham. Tremendous promises. Promises that were just amazing to one man in the middle of nowhere. God said to him, all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. And he said, to your offspring or seed, I will give this land. And that's not just, I would say, the land of Israel. For the children of faith who are the Gentiles, it's the world that we live in. To your offspring, I will give this land. He says, I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth. And he says, through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. Now, you've got this word offspring or seed, and in the early part of that uh, um, book of uh, Galatians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul goes into this, and he sort of makes a, a, an interesting point here. He says that in verse 16, the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. The scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but to, but, and to your seed, meaning one person who is Christ. Now, it's been my, I almost said misfortune, but a different uh, career route happened to me four or five years ago when I started teaching English. Now, if you know something of my background, I'm far more on the science side, the logic side, and I like logic and things that fit together and have an answer to them. And one thing you find out about language is it never makes sense. You know, you'll, you'll get a rule, this is how it should be, and then you have this list of exceptions. And in English, we have this interesting one with offspring or seed. Offspring is uh, both a singular noun and a plural noun. You can say, my offspring, how many offspring do you have? One. How many offspring do you have? Ten. Okay. Or seed is the same. And seed in the Old Testament way, his seed, his offspring, his descendants. But that's not a plural noun. That's singular. Or put one descendant, many descendants. English, uh, Bengali is quite interesting because Bengali, it doesn't put a plural on the noun if you have the plural on the adjective. And that's quite common sense as well. So you wouldn't say, you'd say we would say five books, and you've got to say an S at the end, haven't you? But in Bengali, you don't. You say five book. Because, you know, obviously it's plural, because there's five of them. Why do you need an S at the end? So their way of doing it is different. That's why many people from the subcontinent, when they speak English, you'll, see, you'll hear them talking about, you know, um, five glass or five uh, pen or something because from their language they don't make a plural out of it and in English we have nouns that are singular and have a plural meaning and seed and offspring are one of them but in, in uh, the Hebrew here and I'm not quite scholar enough to be able to analyze it very fully but Paul says and it's there as you try and work through the interlinear Hebrew Bibles it's one seed, Abraham and his seed, Abraham and his one descendant, Abraham and the one who was going to come through him, who would be the seed, the promise of God. And Paul says, and that is who is, who is Christ? Abraham is, sorry, Jesus is the seed, the, 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 the descendant of Abraham, the promise that God has made. 
You know, even Jesus says at one point, he says, before Abraham was, I am. Lovely verse, not quite connected to this, but just, you know, Abraham and Jesus. Jesus, the seed of Abraham. And here in that verse at the end we were looking at, uh, it says, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And there is one seed, Jesus, and now there are many seeds, us. It spreads out. To me, it's another slight change of the picture. It's like the sack. And I, I, I looked for one, I couldn't find it, I'm afraid. I'd love to have had it as an illustration. A nice uh, Hessian sack. We used to make those in Bangladesh when, uh, not us personally, but it was one of the main products of Bangladesh when jute was in big demand and the jute sacks and crops. And if you go to the shops these days in Bangladesh and you buy a sack of rice, and uh, you can do that in Queen's Park as well. You can go and buy your sack of rice. It won't be a Hessian sack, probably, uh, but you can buy your sack there uh, if you can eat that much rice. But uh, in that one sack, there are many seeds. And in that one Jesus, there are many seeds who are descendants uh, of Christ, who are, who are the followers of Christ. So we are there many in the one sack. So our blessings come from where? They come from being in Christ. We're in the sack. Another personal illustration that comes to mind from that is, I remember years back, um, we were, I think it was Jenny wasn't with me, or even may have been before marriage, but we were on the, I was on the station platform at Howrah uh, in Calcutta. And uh, the, the train comes in and everyone is waiting for the train. And um, there are always 10 times more people waiting than there are seats on the train. And some who are a bit clever, they've already been to where the train was parked outside, and they're already on it. Uh, and so they've already got their seat. Or they sell their seat, and they, they connect with the coolies. The coolies flog the seats to the um, uh, people waiting. And, and then they get you on the seat. So this coolie, this porter, we call them coolies there, came and said, you know, do you want me to help you get on the train? So I thought, well, I don't usually spend money on this. Get on the train somehow. And so we may have made an agreement. And in comes the train. And of course, you've got this crowd of people. We're all going to get on that train. The train comes in and uh, stops here. There's the door. And uh, I'm saying there's a massive crowd around it, and I'm way on the outside. And the coolie ca calls me and says, Come this way, this way. And there's the window. And he helps pick me up, picks me up, and pushes me through the window and gets me on the train. And, uh, you know, I'm there with this crowd of people all around me. And I've made it, but I thought I was getting a, a seat. But no, no, he said, I just got you on the train, didn't I? Give me, give me the money. So I paid the money just to get on the train. Uh, but once on it, I'm on it. And the other thing is, once you're on it, of course, you then unite with all those who are on it, and you keep away other people who are trying to get on it. You know, stop climbing through the window because your, your compartment gets more and more crowded. But once you're on the train, where the train goes, you're going with it. Once you're in Christ, where Christ is going, you're going with it. You know, I, I, I was reading this morning, actually, it says, I am the way, no, um, is it Thomas or Philip says to Jesus, we don't know where you're going, how can we possibly know the way? And Jesus says, well, I'm the way, the truth and the life. And it sort of dawned on me for the first time, yeah, Jesus knows where he's going. These disciples don't know where he's going. And so they say, how can we get there? We don't know where you're going. And his answer is, but I'm the way. You may not know the objective. You may not know quite where you're going, but I'm the way. And get into my carriage, and I'm going to take you there. Be in my sack. And where the sack goes, you're going to be. And to me, that's a tremendous... I mean, you know, in, in rush hour these days, well, not these days, earlier days and probably days to come, uh, especially if there's a train crisis and, 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 the, and the train is, the, the platform is full, the train comes in and you know you've got to get on that train and you're desperate, I've got to get on that train. And maybe you have to be less than polite in your behaviour, but somehow you're going to get on that train. 
Because that train is going to take you where you want to go to. Jesus, Abraham's descendant, the one who rescues the prisoners of sin, the one who gives us salvation, the one who unites us with Christ, he's the train. Now, we're not fighting with other people. Praise God, Jesus said, in my father's house, on my train, there's lots of seats, there's lots of room. But you better be desperate to get on it. You better try hard to get on it. Because today, it says, today is the day of salvation. You switch back a couple of verses before that, uh, and it says, um, you are all sons of God, sons and daughters of God. This is the, uh, the blessing of Abraham that's come to Jesus and now is transferred to us. You are sons of God through faith. For you've all been baptized into Christ, for all who, have, all who have been baptized in Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Of course, baptism is a word that we use in English. It's simply taking the Greek word and writing it in English. I think it was to do with a lot of some sort of theological, uh, political correctness that rather than translate it, it was just written over from the Greek to the English. Because you can actually translate it. And baptism means to be immersed. It means to have a bath. All of you who have been immersed in Christ had a holy bath. In Bangladesh, we often do say that. You say, what, people say, what do I do if I want to follow Jesus? And generally speaking, we don't do a sinner's prayer. But we say, if you want to follow Jesus, you need to join the pathway. There's a word that we use, dorica, join the pathway and be baptized. Peter in Acts 2 says, repent and believe and be baptized. Have a bath. Have a holy bath. So when you go into that water, you are immersed, not in the water, but you're immersed in Christ. And when you come out, you put on new clothes, and the clothes are Christ. We are clothed with Jesus. We walk as sons and daughters of God, having been taken that holy bath and now wearing Christ as our identification, as our portrayal in front of the world that we're in. And this is the, the wonderful thing that comes to us. And because we're clothed in Christ, here in this body of Christ, what does it say? There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now, Jews were a relatively small number of people, but they were very particular people. And it was a huge struggle for the gospel to go out from the Jews to the Greeks. Greeks includes everybody else. But here Paul and his writings again and again, he's saying there's only one group, one ethnic group in the church. There's neither Jew nor Greek nor Bangladeshi nor Indonesian nor Irish, we are all one in Christ. So our ethnicity, our tribalism, our colour of our skin, I always chuckle when people say, you know, we're white. Good heavens, if that's white, I wonder when I put on my decorating, when I put on my wall, it's nothing to do with white. But nevertheless, we classify people in that way. And all lives matter. Whatever the way that we were born, there's no ethnicity in Christ. It says the um, male and female, equal value to the male, to the female in the body of Christ. Maybe different roles. Some of us go for egalitarianism. We're all the same. Others go for a separation of roles. We have different tasks in the body of Christ, but we have the same place, male and and female, rich and poor. The rich, we had this um, two weeks ago with Brother Dave Devonish, didn't we? And he talked in James how the rich would rejoice in their low position and the poor would rejoice in their high position. Slave and master, or slave and free. And it's true that I think to say the Bible does not argue against slavery. It was a system at that time, but it sits the slave and the master 
next to each other and says, look, you're one in Christ. You take care of this person who works for you. He's your brother or sister in Christ. You serve this person because the person that's going to receive your service is a follower of Jesus. And to my mind, that basically destroys all of the negative systems, all the negative, negative actions that have come out in our tragic history uh, of slavery. There's no slave and there's no free person in Christ. We are all one in Christ. No barbarian or Scythian, it says in Colossians 3.11. Barbarian and Scythian, the, the, the uncivilized, the, the, the barbarians out there. There's no people that fall outside the grace of God. There's no place on earth that we cannot go to or should not go to. That is why this message is essentially a missionary message. It's essentially a world message. Yes, everybody here, but everybody there. If it's true for me here, it's true also for them there. And it's lovely, isn't it? Revelations chapter 5, uh, when it says, you have purchased men from every tribe, men and women from every tribe, every language, every people, and every nation. Not only purchased them, but you've done something with them. You've made them a kingdom and priests to serve God. Now, one of the great highlights, last two years in Bangladesh, we've be part of an international group there. And every year we meet for a, a, a few days of refreshment. And in the worship sessions led by an American lady, got a tremendous gift. She's been superb at bringing together the different uh, national groups that are there. We've had Ethiopians, Indians, Chinese, Nigerian, Australian, British, American, Canadian, Australian, Peruvian, Filipino, Korean, German, Swedish, and Bangladeshi. And we can worship in our own languages, we can worship in English, and we can worship in, in the Bengali language. And it has been enormously uplifting. And what we need to realize is, this is our nature. This is what we are as the body of Christ. We are one in Christ. And this is how we also reach out across the world, because it's got to be to every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. And that's what, in that sense, keeps us going back to Bangladesh. So, one in Christ. And just in closing to say then, for all of us, there's equal opportunity to come in. There is room on the train. There is a place in God's house. There's an equal opportunity for every one of these divisions that we create in this world. There's equal value to all of us. It's not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atonement for our sins. He loved me. He loved you. You are the same value as me, and me the same value as you. Not only that, there's equal responsibility. We didn't come uh, into the church as free riders to have a seat and enjoy all the benefits and everybody's going to look after us. No. We come in and because it's a free entry, there's a lot of responsibility. God's got to work for each of us. We are created to do God's work. And because of that, he gives gifts to all of us, the gifts that we can use to serve him, to serve the church, and to serve the community around us. And that which is true for us is then the lens through which we look at the world around us. Yeah, if we don't do it, that's sinful, and we need to repent. But when we go out to there, then we seek to model it and to live it out so that we can also then attract in those people that would hear and see and want to join. So that's the tremendous message through this, that we are one in Christ. Whatever these variations and diversities and differences that come upon us, and we look out at the world with the same viewpoint. May God lead us as we live out these things. Thank you for joining me this morning and all the rest of us as we carry on with this service.
give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only God great are you Lord from the top now Give life to our love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. You great are you, Lord, so great. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord, and all the earth will shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. the nations we declare that today
Lord, we thank you this morning that we've been reminded that we are born again of one seed and brought into your family by that seed. And that seed came from Abraham, but that seed is Christ. And Lord, we thank you that we are all one and we are joined together and we're made one when we meet in Christ. And so, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would come and move not just to the people who hear this message from me this morning, but Lord, you do a deeper work in the world, in your word and in your body, that the body of Christ, the church, would realize that we have been born of one seed and Christ is the promise himself. And Lord, help us to know how to put on Christ on a daily basis and show that we are one and our identities are all put into the, mel the melting pot of Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you for these words that we find in chapter 4 of Galatians. Because you are sons and we have the same father, not just Father Abraham, but Father God, God sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, the spirit who calls out, Abba, Father. Lord, I pray that you would help us to move into that place of relationship and intimacy. And Lord, that we would lay down our identities that have been given to us by accident of birth in the countries we have, in the backgrounds we have, and that in Jesus I lay down my Northern Irish background on all the baggage that goes with us. And I say, I find a new identity in Jesus. And I pray this morning that each one of us would realize that true freedom is being found in Jesus in every level and in every way of life. And Lord, I pray that as we come this morning, we would lay down, we'd lay down the color of our skin, we'd lay down our education, We'd lay down the props that we put in place. We lay down our, even our ecclesiastic and church backgrounds. We lay them down and say that we come to thee naked, come to thee for dress. Lord, I pray that a new security would come upon each one of your children this morning and in the church in the world, that we would not identify as anything other than, first of all, Jesus's. We belong to Jesus. That's where we get our security from. That's where we get our ability to have expectation and hope going forward in this time of crisis. So Holy Spirit, come and take away the fear. Come and take away whatever we identify before we identify as believers and followers of Jesus. We want to be followers of Jesus in our minds, in our motives, and in our behavior. So come Holy Spirit, and deal with anything in my life that gets in the way, whether it be my Northern Irishism, my evangelicalism, whatever position we take, Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit would come and bring us a deeper security and assurance of who we are in Christ. <laughs> that was because I knocked something off the table, by the way, guys. So if you're feeling the presence of God at your home and you know that you're no matter what the color of a person's skin or the background um, the, of the person sitting in front of you or walking in front of you or walking towards you in the street, that we at any one time identify as followers of Jesus. And we react as followers of Jesus even when the government have suspended their daily, their daily press gatherings, that we don't need to be scared anymore. We have our identity our identity in Jesus. And we need to use Jesus as our lens for everything because we come from his seed. So if you want prayer for anything this morning, words of knowledge or anything that the preach has stirred up in you, questions or issues and needs, please join us and join Merrill and I in the ministry room. May God bless you.
Just be.